What up, y'all? What up, y'all? It's your boy OG Big Sam in the house, in the house on this Friday. Look to the Friday. Friday Falcon High New Madness, y'all. We in the building this week. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things, you know what I'm saying? Recap a few things and, you know, cap, cap the week off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Get y'all ready for tonight's event, you know what I'm saying? With the fellas doing their thing, you know, ATN game down there, you know what I'm saying? With the therapists and them guys. Um, hey, right. hope everybody's doing just fine. Just fine. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, how I believe uh, the, the, the strength of this defense, um, Is something that not too many people are talking about. They're talking about it, but they're not talking about it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I keep hearing people talking about how much we need I mean, I mean, but you know, yeah, they be street, Omiyada, Grady, come back, Taekwon, Zach Harrison, uh. London, um, and, and all those guys down there on the line. Some of those guys are defensive ends. So, um, our linebacker room, as it were, I think we need to have a linebacking core of Swiss Army knives. In somewhat, in most cases, that we, that we do. Um, I mean, because, all right, let's, let's take it from this perspective. With Troy coming back, uh, you know what I'm saying? Caden can move back into his natural spot on the outside where he covers well, and he gets the quarterback pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he does. He does. Um, and he, 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 he does well against the run. Um, the shining light, if you will, there's, there's a silver lining in losing Grady and losing Anderson. We got to see some other parts. We got to do. We got a good look at some other parts. You know what I'm saying? In in, in this office, and and I, and I, I mean, in defense. And I'm, I'm just, you know, wondering, like, are we missing the boat on the linebacker room? You know, because you know, no one's discussing. Because Evan Katie and Malone take a step or two forward. And you got Anderson coming back. You got, you know what I'm saying, Caden Ellis. You got uh, uh, is London? Uh, Landerman? Yeah, Landerman. You know what I mean? We got we, we set up pretty nice in, in his linebacker room. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and and I think that we're set up so well. I think that this linebacker room is going to be the key to this defensive success. I mean, you know, there's enough leadership there. There's enough. There's enough talent there. Um. And in in some of the cases, you know, the, the development is good. I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for Abby Getty and Malone to take a step forward this season. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, you know, it, it, excuse me, but I'm just, I'm just a little, I'm just a little, a little bit old school, you know, when it comes to this football thing. You know what I'm saying? Y'all running out there and and and, and spending, you know, hundreds of million dollars on players, and you you got. Guys on the roster, that all you got to do is put your time and coach into, and you know what I'm saying, and steer them in the right direction, and 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 and, and, and let it be what it be. You know, that's my thought process of it. Hey, Sonya, what up, Sherman? You know, I'm. I mean. Correct. I'm. I it just. That just. I'm. I'm looking at these guys. You know, like I said. You know, we, you get everybody back healthy. You know what I'm saying. You know, T1000 back to his RoboCop trajectory. You know. Um. Landerman, you know, I'm hoping I'm saying the, the right name. Um, Landerman, who played the mic when 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 Anderson went down. Um, shoot, I, I think I think we set. I think we set. No, I, I really do. Because because Troy comes back. And, and and stays on the trajectory that he was on before he, you know what I'm saying, suffered the injury. <sighs> I mean, y'all got, y'all, y'all must have forgot the reason why that boy got nicknamed T1000. All right. You, you talking about a guy it growing up, all right? In high school, he he came into college as a quarterback, and his body developed into you know a cyborg organism. So they had to put it as on defense. Now that young man took all of that knowledge of being a quarterback since uh Pop Warner, Pee Wee League. You know, going through high school, he was a quarterback. He he was a quarterback. And then he gets to college, and his body said, "I am Hulk." And shit, they had to put him on defense. Now, he's he's had he's had, he's had all this time to be on the sidelines and see, you know, what I'm saying the things and whatnot, and. And, you know, he was learning how to be, he was learning the position. He was, he was talking to me, boy, when, when his, when his men, mental catches up with his physical, which I think probably happened with this injury. Ooh, it, it, mm. The, with him and Ellis and Landerman and Edward Caddy and Malone and I think Smith, I think. I think this linebacking core is what's going to be the key to our defensive success next season. I really do. I really do. Ghost Peppers, what's happening, man? Appreciate you for joining. Appreciate you for joining. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm, I'm I'm talking about this linebacker core, man. You know, um, which no one seems to be talking about when it comes to the defense. Um, and I'm thinking that this this linebacker room is going to be the key to uh, the this Atlanta Falcons defensive success. I mean, when you when you look at it big picture wise. We saw some things on last season from Caden Ellis. We saw some things from Landerman. We saw some, we saw some things, man. You know, um, 
And like I said, it, Malone and Ebony Kitty could take, you know what I'm saying, some major strides in their development, you know, taking a step forward in, in their progression, if you will. We, 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 we have a chance to have a top five linebacking core. Dead ass. Dead ass. I believe that. I mean, we got that beast of a mountain-sized country boy in, in, in Troy Anderson. He's coming back to the fold, and I think it's going to be easy for him to just, you know, step back in, like, you know what I'm saying, and, and hit the ground running. I mean, because his nose for the point of attack, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal to me. You know what I'm saying? And he was getting, he was getting a whole lot. He was making strides in his pass coverage. You know what I'm saying? I, I, he, he can get back on that, that, that trending, that, that upward trajectory. Bruh. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Them four guys, Evan Katie, Malone, and Troy. Ellis, well, actually five, is a landerman. Them five guys right there in that lock, in that in, in in that linebacker locker room is, I mean, well, we we there's a chance that this linebacker unit could get, could shake some things up. You know that that just. That's just my belief. I mean, you know, because, you know, there's a whole lot of talk about, the, you know, the defensive backs and, you know, and everything that's going on with the the D, the, the D line and, and whatnot. But this is linebacking core, bro. Coming off of some of the, the, the youngsters that we was able to see, you know, the, the other guys stepping into situations out of their comfort zones and prospering to a very large degree, you know, Landerman and Caden Ellis, I think, were a top five or six linebacker duo in the league last season. You know, we 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 saw some good kids. Now I'm I'm quite sure a lot of y'all could probably throw up some names and whatnot. I mean, but those two cats played unforgiving defense on third down. There, I mean. You can you and you can check the film. You can check the film. You can check the film. And because the numbers tell you, bro, we were we were number two third down defensive percentage. We were number one in red zone defense, bro, and largely to do with them two cats right now. Now you bring the Montana Cyborg T1000, aka Troy Anderson, back into the mix. And like I said, Evan Kitty, you know what I'm saying, takes another giant stride forward, as well as Malone. Wow, I, I think they're, they're going to be the key to some things that we are going to be able to do in this um, Raheem Morris, uh, Jerry Gray, Jimmy Lake defense. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, you know, saying that, 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 that I, I, I wish I could, I could have, a, you know, a, another perspective or, or a, you know, something. 
I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, this is what I see. You know what I'm saying? You know, this, this is what I, this is what I see on, on, on the situation. I mean, because, you know, like I said, before the injury, I mean, Troy, he was, he was, It wasn't from for, from a lack of trying. Yeah, he, he got beat on on some tight end po post play. I mean, you know, you got the you got to handle that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you'll see the film and you yeah, and it'd be easy to see where you know what I'm saying you 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 messed up at you know in 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 pass coverage. It, that, that's easily fixable. You know, and he was on his way to that. I mean, because his pass coverage was getting better, you know what I'm saying? You know, in, in the mid route range, it, it was getting better. It was. It was getting better. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know, with them three guys, Ellis, back on, back in his natural spot on the outside, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, on, on, on Grady's, you know what I'm saying, outside foot. You know, and then you got Troy and Landerman, and you know, I think I think Evan Kelly and Malone are going to be interchangeable parts, depending on what you're going to be doing. Because Evan Kelly, he you can see he got kind of he got kind of good, and in, in, you know, in in in, in kind of kind of he he was kind of he was. Inconsistent a little bit on setting that edge and be, you know and, and, and busting that cone, but you could see it, 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 the, the engine was was it was trying to rev. You know he, he he I think he can get it there this season. You know, I mean you know that that's just my my thought process on 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 that right now. You know. I mean, hey, I guess we will see. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else saw it. Uh, Kirk Cousins' interview on the big podcast we said. I um, I took away a few tidbits, and 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 I was, you know, in one of those tidbits I did that. That I came from that interview, it was his motivation to get it done and what's behind it. You know, he, he got the, it was the portion of where, you know, they got, he got to talking about his kids and what they had seen and, you know, and and, and 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 understanding that they were the, they, you know they were babies when he was in Washington you know and they was you know and then and then only the Minnesota he wasn't gonna remember much but just being the age where they are now um this is something that they're gonna remember daddy playing football and because his whole demeanor changed you know, and, and when, he, when he got to talking about that point, he said, I, I want to finish strong and give them something to remember, you know, and, 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 and you have these moments, you know, and that's a strong thing. That's a strong thing that, you know, and, and Kirk has never been one for, for a lack of character. You know, he, he we've seen his competitiveness. We, we, we've seen him in the moment. You know, he's had some very good moments, you know, and, 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 and he's had some not so good moments, but he's had some good moments in, 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 in big situations. You know, um, two, two, two of his three, you know, playoff losses in Minnesota came with the defense being the last unit on the field. I'm just, I'm just pointing it out. Ladies and gentlemen, look like the senator has jumped into the building. Good evening, sir. How, how she say that on that yeah. uh, Dr. Dre? 
Well, her name, mm-hmm. uh, Petra. I don't know how to talk. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I'm just trying to talk fast, like, bitch. Let mm-hmm. me ride. Right. That's a. I'm, 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 I still don't. I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck Petra said on that song. By the way. <laughs> See, if y'all don't know nothing about the chronic, y'all wouldn't understand what the hell I talk about. So, you youngsters, you won't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So. She started that song. I don't know what the fuck she said, but it sounds Ooh. good. That motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Let me ride. That's all. That's all you need to know. <laughs> See, you probably had to be smoking some of that chronic. To understand hey, that you understand thing. what the hell she said? <laughs> all the chronic smokers, boy. Y- y'all know what that means. So, Senator, um, on I, I in a pre in our earlier conversation, you said you hadn't seen the interview. Um, but given what I, you know, I'm just going off the tidbits that I took in, in, in the part that really caught, caught my eye in what would be his motivation coming into this season. That's to me, that's some strong shit. I mean, you know, he know where he is. He know what this moment is going to be. He, he knows what these years are about. And he was like, I want to fit. When he said, I want to finish strong. But you, when you when you look at it, you, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he when he said, I want to finish strong so they could have, you know, some, a moment. And I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Yeah. This 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 going to be some good shit. Um. And like I said, Kurt has had some, he's had some good moments. You know, we, you like that, you know, in Washington, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he pulled that off. The Minnesota miracle, you know, um, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's done some things. And now he's in a situation with a unit in a lot of things at his disposal with that motivation. Hey, I think, hey, let's, let's put the seatbelts on and see where this ride going to take us. That's what I took from the interview. Um, oh, and he has a great Falcon cry. He, he the Shaq, Shaq, Shaq had him do the oh oh. <laughs> hey, hey, that was wild. But honestly, something else, another tidbit that I took from the interview. He's genuinely happy to be here, and. I think that got a lot to do with, you know, saying what's at home. She's happy. Miss Miss Cousins, she happy. And people, people, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you something. In that contract, I'm going to tell you, that guaranteed money, that bought the wife. That, 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 yeah, that, that took care of that right there. That 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 took care of that yeah mm-hmm. that guaranteed money yeah that was for the wife that was for the wife <laughs> yeah <laughs> we give you hundred million to come on to the crib you know and uh, there was sports. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see. I honestly believe he is a great plug and play quarterback for us 
to get the most out of the talent. I think this this should be <clears throat> an intriguing year for our Falcons with a great leader at head coach. Hey, yeah, dead on. Time better when you say it. Uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> let, let... I think it's very disrespectful to say he'll plug and play quarterback. Um, this man has proven that he's a good quarterback, a very good quarterback. That's very disrespectful to uh, allude to the fact that he's a plug and play. He's not a plug and play. A plug and play is a guy like Desi Ritter. We gonna give respect to Kirk Cousins because he earned that respect because he's had over five seasons of four thousand yards passing. So Senator, we don't. Senator, we, no, Senator, we not doing this. No, uh-uh. Senator, no, Senator, no, no, sir. Hit me mm-hmm. out. Hit me out. Hit nope. me out. Hit me out. Hold on. Hit me out. I think, and then I you could comment, you know, saying if 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 I, if I hit it right, I think that what he meant by that was I, the I fact know what that, he meant. No, well, no, you got to use your see around around these parts. What we what what's what's the uh what's the words around here? Every word will and will and can be held against you up here. So we gonna stand by what we what we stand. We stand on being around here. All right. The facts are stats to the truth. And the facts are is that this man has had what what's my rule when it comes down to saying guys are, are, are good quarterbacks? Not even just very good or elite. You gotta have at the very least four straight years of consistency. So he's mm-hmm. already earned that right. So any quarterback that has had four plus seasons of consistency and consistent numbers deserve the right to be called a great quarterback. Kirk Cousins is a great quarterback. How far he goes is up to him and this Atlanta Falcons team. So there's no disrespect to uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rare Sports, but we're going to give respect to Kirk Cousins because he's earned that right. He's a very good quarterback. So to elude the fact that he's a plug and play, that means you can plug him and then play him and plug him and then play him. No, nope, this bitch stay plugged in. He's in the matrix. He's Neo, goddamn it. Okay, he's earned the right to be at least Trinity, goddamn. He earned the he earned the right to be goddamn Morpheus. Okay, he has earned that right. All right, let's, let's just give respect to Mr. Kirk Cousins. I, I think I, I think that right there kind of alludes to that. <laughs> I, 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 I think I think that you know this young man. I, I, I was, know. I, I was, you know. I, I was I was I was trying to be your 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 your, your district attorney, but you know the son of the life. I, you know, saying. You gotta you know. watch what you say around yeah. us. Like, see, yeah. me and K Styles, we we me and K Styles and one, we 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 hang on to every little word that you. That's probably why people don't like us. It's because we hang on every little word that you say. But uh, like I said, uh, they were uh, like like I said, that man has earned the right to be called a great quarterback. You know, once you talk about consistency, and this is what we say about even guys like. Uh, Thou shot who not be named. Um, right. Desmond uh-huh. Ritter, a.k.a. the boogeyman. Any quarterback that hasn't had consistency, they don't they don't get the right. They should not get the right to say that they're very good or generational or, or whatever you you want to call them. You can't say you're a good quarterback when you never pass over three thousand yards. That's never had. That's never happened. So you don't even own you don't even own the right to say you average because you're not even average at that point. You're below oh, average. Nice. Anything, anything that's under three thousand yards as a quarterback, it's a fucking travesty. Uh, Senator, Senator, I think, I think Corey, Corey coming at you. Corey coming at you. <laughs> I mean, Morpheus wasn't the one. Morpheus, the one with the. See, let's get this right. Yes, he is Morpheus. Morpheus has the knowledge on who is the one. All right, <laughs> Neo and Trinity are the ones. Okay, let's let's get that straight. So he has the right to be called Morpheus. Morpheus ain't the one. He just got the knowledge. <laughs> Kirk Cousins out there doing it. So what we gonna say this is Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is is Neo. All right, but 
we got guys like uh, let, 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 I, I won't even go that far. Kirk Cousins, he earned the right to be at least um, uh, 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 Agent Smith. All right, we'll just say that he earned the right to be that. Hey, All right, he, ain't nobody he, ain't he, it, it, it. in this era. He is he him and 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 Flacco and Rogers were like the you know saying kind of sort of the last of Mohicans around this gap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look at look at this quarterback group. Like I said, there there's only one elite quarterback in this. I say there's nobody in the top. There should be no quarterback in the top five. That's only one mm-hmm. person that should be a top five quarterback, and that's that's uh, Patrick Mahomes. All the other ding, quarterbacks ding, are playing catch up. Ding ding. Can you read that, sir? Yes, I can. Do you think we will still utilize the running game and be dominant like we were last year in the running uh, running the rock? I hope we still grind a pound. Um, absolutely. The thing is, like, um, the the running game is uh, like, I don't think uh, this team is going to be. They're going to do whatever it takes to win. So it's like I'm not gonna say we're gonna be a dominant. Like I'm, I'm gonna just be real. Don't, like don't get carried away with trying to worry about whether we're gonna run a pass. The, the thing we need is to focus on to being efficient and scoring points. I don't give a fuck how we score them points. Whether we throw the ball or run it, we just need to worry about being efficient. The more the the more we get focused on who got the ball, who getting the ball, and who not running the ball, all that shit messes things up. That's what happened last year right. with Arthur. Because everybody was so focused on, oh, Kyle need to get his, Bijan need to get his, Tyler need to get his, CP need to get his. Like, don't focus on what aspect of the offense that should be featured. As long as we scoring touchdowns, getting in that red zone, and we scoring, that should matter. I don't give a damn about who, what, or how many times we pass, or how many times we run. We need to, we need to get in the fucking red zone. We need to be efficient. And Kirk Cousins is an efficient. He's always been a quarterback that gets touchdowns when he's in the uh when he's in the red zone. Now, um Senator, um, uh, I'm going to use one of your sayings that you <laughs> often go by. Um we have to if you watch what they are doing, they will tell you what they are doing. Okay, we brought in Charlie Warner. One of the better blocking and possession tight ends in this league from San Francisco. Um, we kept uh, uh, with we, we, we Fitzgerald in that tight end. Room. Oh yeah, we gonna run the ball. Uh-huh. We gonna run the ball. Okay, um, but we're also gonna air it out too. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. gonna be a track meet. It's gonna be hey, a track meet. And, and, we're gonna and, do and, whatever and, it takes. And the personnel moves tell you that. They tell you that. We're gonna do whatever it takes to succeed. That's why I said I'm not worried about who what who get the ball. As long as we is fishing. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. Um I'm not to uh inside the info on uh Grady and Troy's uh recovery and where they are in their rehabilitation and 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 their health status but I have seen um Grady posting videos of him in the gym um looking like a little baby hulk yeah, they um, got these girl about to bust a, uh, uh, they they about to bust wide open looking at that dude. That motherfucker got <laughs> muscles out from his head to his toe. Like, God damn, right. Grady, what you trying to do? And I I caught the uh, on the, uh, the other day when the when they, all the guys were reporting in and, and they caught the little video the little slit. I was trying to get it, but I you know, you know not technically sound to pull that kind of stuff, but um. You know, with Troy walking up the walkway in the flowery branch, and yeah, he looked like he might have put on ten pounds. Mm-hmm. As as in, like he really need any more muscle mass. 
I mean, know, don't be surprised. He'd be an outside guy. I'm, uh, look, I'm just telling hey, you. Don't be surprised. Look, I mean, He'd be... Look, I, it, it, and it really wouldn't. I mean, because like, like I was talking earlier, you know, of what you know the silver li the silver lining to what um you know losing troy and losing grady we we saw other pieces you know what i'm saying and parts you know what I'm saying of this personnel and we saw you know what I'm saying the, all the capability of uh, Caden ellis and Latimer. i'm hoping i'm saying the right name um it that it that that played you know what I'm saying they had the duties of the mic you know you know it lead, in leading the defense. I said that those two I think were a top five or six you know what I'm saying middle linebacker duo last season. I just just and you know and I think the numbers kind of support that little tidbit you know from you know certain aspects. Um, mm -hmm. And. And see, that's what I was kind of alluding to on um, a previous segment about who could, who will we be looking to? I think that Evan Katie and Malone are going to take some strifeful steps forward in, in, in this because this linebacker and if that comes to fruition, this linebacking core could you know be the key to the defensive success of the Falcons. And nobody is talking about that. No, Caden Evans, Tro Troy Anderson, Landerman, Malone, Evan Kitty. Seriously. Those are five guys that can have extreme impact on the defensive direction of this unit and be successful. I mean, but I guess if you're not talking about, you know, a bash in the quarterback, there ain't nobody listening. No, because they, people rather bust a nut than actually, you know, indulge in foreplay. But that's a whole nother story. Right. Um, but, this this linebacking core, this Falcons have probably one of the deepest linebacking core, the most versatile linebacking core that in the NFL. Um, you got two guys, you literally have three guys that can play inside and outside. That doesn't happen to many teams. You don't have two to three guys on the team that can play inside and outside. Caden Nellis has already shown you that he can get sacks. Troy Anderson has already showed that he has the ability and the speed and the athleticism to play inside, outside, you know, like, like I said, he's 6'4", 240 plus pounds. Um, and the same thing for Nate Lamb. And if y'all say Nate Lamb and he's just a, like, he's just naturally a natural big guy. That dude is just, he's just naturally big. So, um, that dude, that dude is something else. So it's like, you got three linebackers right off the top that you can put on the inside and outside and these guys play pretty good on 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 all on both in both run and pass situations. Again, right. the Falcons are the only. It's not many teams that can just throw any linebacker and say, "All right, you the middle linebacker. I need you to be pretty good." Both mm -hmm. of those guys, all three of those guys, got the ability to you know to get that the quarterback um, and blitz That'd and be, be crazy aggressive. To have three guys on the field with the green dot on the head. Mm hmm. So, like I said, it's it's Falcons have a unique situation. They have a unique situation, and I don't think a lot of people are paying too much attention to a guy like Caden Ellis. Caden Ellis is being like completely disrespected by a lot of these Falcons uh, content creators. Because again, if y'all saw him in New Orleans, the dude got seven to eight sacks, like two, three, almost two to three years in a row. This dude can get after the quarterback. It's not about all these spin moves and how, how like, uh, how, 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 you know, how quick and how fast you can be. It's about effectiveness. All right. It's all right. about being effective. This guy's an effective pass rusher. 
That's that's what it all will come down to. No matter how you get to the quarterback, no matter how you get that sack, as long as you get the sack, that's all they care about. This dude is very effective on it. Like, because we've seen with uh, on the every kid, we've seen all them spin moves and him spinning himself out of sacks and stuff like that. So all them spin moves and being able to run a full five and all that, all that crap, that shit don't matter if you're not actually getting the job done. Caden Ellis gets the job done. Ding, 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 ding. I know this is in the past, but if we kept overcome with this defense have, have been elite, and would we be a force to be reckoned with? Your thoughts? Huh. Nah, I'm good on that. I'm, I'm not paying no linebacker on that, no $40 million. That's strictly a tackler. Like, he's strictly a tackler. He's not as good as he should be in the passing game. He's a he's a tackler. Falcons have three volume tacklers. I'm I'm, I'm not paying $50, $40, 50000000 million for a volume tackler. Mm. That's and all... This- that's all he, he is. He, He's a volume tackler. Yeah, he can have 140 tackles, but of them 140 tackles, only 70 of them are solo, uh, 60 or 65 of uh, solo tackles. Mm-hmm. He's not an impact middle linebacker like that. He's very effective, and there's nothing wrong with being an effective linebacker or effective players. But you're not like for me. If I'm if, and this is one of the main reasons why I say. Me personally, I would think twice about giving AJ, you know, twenty million dollars a year because he's not a he's not a one of the cornerback where you say, all right, I need a play, go make me a play, get me an interception, get me a fumble. Like he's not one of those types of guys. But AJ is one of those guys. Like you put him on anybody, you know, he gonna cover their ass. Like he gonna cover their ass. He's going to stick his nose in the run game. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, he's going to play good in his own. Uh, you know, but he doesn't generate turnovers. That's the, and that's a blaring thing. Big I mean, players he, he, make he, he big plays. He doesn't, he, he doesn't give up yet, yards. Okay? He doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know, if you catch the ball on him, he's going to tackle you on that spot. You're not going to, you know, uh, un- unless you're allowed to get away with, you know, what I'm saying, you know, mug, get, you know, mugging them like Mike Evans and D. Hop got away with, you know, that's the only way you're gonna beat him. Honestly, I, I, and, and 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 that's a, a testament to him. But at the same time, what kind of slows all that down is he doesn't generate turnovers. Yeah, big players make big plays in big moments. That's what you pay the money for. You don't pay guys twenty million dollars to be consistent and covering guys. You know what I'm saying? It's like the mm-hmm. thing is, too, you can you can kind of hide bad coverage. I want to say bad coverage, but you can hide average coverage with great defensive linemen. Right. You see what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. if you're gonna pay a corner that much money, that corner got to be able to make big plays in big moments. Get those uh, pass defend on fourth on fourth down. You know what I'm saying? When we need a key stop, get those interceptions. Bat that ball down in certain situations. AJ does the bat down thing. He does great with pass defense. But when we need that big play, with him to hold on to an interception that turns the whole momentum away, AJ doesn't do do those types of things. When the I offense mean, is hot, when the offense is hot, we need our DBs to jump a route and 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 get the ball back to the deep, mm-hmm. uh, get back to the offense. AJ doesn't do those types of things. Right, right. I, look, under you, from an old school cat perspective. All right. Um, unfortunately, having lived it. I mean, you know, and saw it up close and whatnot, and uh, you know, I, I, my 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 bar when it comes to cornerback is set just you know kind of sort of unreachable. 
but I have come to understand, you know, and, and I, I and I'm like, okay, there is an air, you know, under that 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 can be reachable, and still, it is hard to, you know, find guys that can even do that. I mean, AJ is is right there, but it the thing is, it, dude, and and the problem and the problem with the no turnover thing is that that's some fixable shit. I mean, bro, turn the turn the turn your head around, just turn turn your head around. Okay, just turn your head around, and you might see the ball coming. I'm just saying. Because there has been there there's been, you know what I'm saying, eight to nine times, especially over last season. He could have had a pick. AJ could have had about eight picks last year. And I know K Styles is probably somewhere listening and just jumping up and down his stomach yeah, and screaming. <laughs> <'Cause> he <laughs> Because he's been saying that. You know, I mean, 13 or 14, you know what I'm saying, million a year. Mm. 18, 19, 20? No, I can't. I can't. Just I can't. Get, learn to get your head around. That's Like I said, that's all there is to it. You learn to get your head around as a DB. You get an mm -hmm. interception. He does. He checks the boxes on everything else. That's the that's the infuriating part of it. He checks the boxes on everything else. He and he will most like he'll most likely get the contract extension. But like I said, the thing is, the Falcons in a situation where they're going to have to make decisions. And mm -hmm. where 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 AJ gets resigned, somebody's got to go. We're gonna start yep. seeing saying help goodbye to guy like Caden Ellis. We're gonna start saying goodbye to guys like um you know, offensive linemen like a a a, mm -hmm. a, a, a Caleb McGeary. You know, even though I think Caleb's gonna be here for at least two more years. You're gonna have to start making decisions. A Tyler Algier. Like there's there's gonna be consequences for yep. giving these guys big time contracts. You know, I mean, taking if, a couple million we, from Grady. From if, Jake. We, if we get in, if we give him anything over 14, yeah, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's, it's gonna definitely hurt. gonna hurt them. It's, it's definitely gonna, gonna hurt. hurt the pocket. It's gonna hurt. That's what that 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 y'all y'all now y'all y'all know y'all been hearing me. You know, over my shows and what have I been saying about AJ? If he's about the mission, he gonna play ball with the front office. Okay, uh -huh. you know, but you know, and, and and he know, and I'm quite sure he's smart enough to know the situation. Yeah, it's about winning. This organization to win, and that's that's why I'm saying guys like Stephon Diggs, man, like they're not good for in, they're not good for the game of football because they're so focused on money. When you start focusing on the money as a player, you've already mm -hmm. lost. You, you're going to be out of league within the, four, yeah. the next three to four years yeah. when you yeah, start yeah. focusing on money. You 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 want to shift gears to, to the Stephon D situation? I mean, it don't matter to me. Okay. Yeah, we kind of uh, ran into it. You know, I, you know I, 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 I like CJ Stroud, okay? I do. I, he's a good kid, and he has a bright future. He's a good quarterback. I wish Houston had, would not have made that deal. I just he, 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 Stephon Diggs is a locker room wrecker. You know what the problem is, though. It's the organization start getting big heads when they figure out they 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 figure out that they found a recipe for success. Once mm -hmm. they feel like they have their guy, and they like, it's it's the same thing what they did with Deshaun Watson. We see this out of organization all the time. Once they figure out, like, oh shoot, man, I made, I, I found me a star. Then you right. start, you start feeling yourself and think you can just bring anybody and make it work. Well, that's what you, that's what you don't want to do. One thing I appreciate about the Atlanta Falcons is, for the most part, they always kept guys with mega egos. 
major ego problems out of the locker room. And this is why I hate this because like you just literally got rid of uh, Deshaun Watson, who was a locker room problem. He was a night. He was a PR nightmare and they're going right back to the same thing. So this is, this is all the ego they brought. They had, uh, O'Brien, the, uh, the officer, the guy that was, um, he was there. Y'all got rid of one guy that had a massive ego problem, and then you bring in another one. See, this yep. is this is the thing about the organization. Uh, like Texas organization, they're gonna forever lose because they're too arrogant. They think they can just turn anybody into stars, even coaches, and it's gonna hurt that team in the long run. That team is gonna go down. Yep. I'm telling you, they're gonna go down real bad because of this particular move. Because it's a, it's a cocky, arrogant move. You got your ass handed to you in the playoffs. All right, yes. CJ did look. CJ did not look like the guy that he looked like in the regular season. Yes. Stop being arrogant. Continue you, to build your you're defense. You're putting him in a bad situation. You're putting CJ. He, he, okay, he 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 made phenomenal strides. Okay, in his rookie season, he's a good quarterback, and he could be better. But you you're going to hinder him with mm-hmm. this move. It, it, yeah. it is going to hurt him. Okay, because he is Stefan Diggs is a problem. Okay, he, he is he is he 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 is not he is not a um he is not that guy that he thinks he is. He's a good mm-hmm. receiver. He runs routes well. Don't get me wrong. And, you know what I'm saying? He uses his speed well, but you know when he, it, it was like what we saw from Pitts last season when he, you, you know, when the play is not coming to him, his body yeah. language tips mm-hmm. <laughs> the offensive play. Yep. Uh, you know you don't want that. You don't need that. This is a, you. You are. Ri- <sighs> I, I I I I pray. For the best for that young man, for Stroud, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that his maturity and you know, and you know, his character wins out in this situation, um, because it is that was just no, 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 no. no. Dude is a problem. He's a major problem. I don't, I don't like Stefan Diggs. I don't like players like Stefan. Because this whole thing, he he bitched and complained about he wanted to get out of his contract. Don't sign a fucking contract if you don't want to get Blame your stupid-ass agent. Don't blame mm-hmm. the organization. Your agent negotiated that deal, okay? So don't sit up here and sit on the fucking sideline whining and crying because your agent didn't get you the best deal possible. Right. That's the end of the, the, At the end of the day, it's about the game. The game is all about being able to compromise whether you like it or not the team don't have to once you sign a contract they don't have to do shit because y'all agreed to it if you don't agree to it don't fucking sign it the end see here's where you know not understanding the situation comes into play look the move from minnesota to buffalo listen okay all right Red flag number one. This is some some off the field stuff. Um, there was a function that the Bills had, and you know some of the Hall of Famers were in attendance. And this jerk blew off Andre Reed. Mm-hmm. I, I, a Buffalo I, Bill legend, okay. A a a, a guy that you know, had you know has you know been there for the organization, mentored some kids, you know, coming up trying to be a receiver, you know, saying with the Bills and whatnot. He, he you know he put he puts in work. He blew off Andre Reed. Disrespectful. With the one ninety nine chat, 
Um, Diggs. Might read that. All right, this shit too small. Diggs and AJ Brown been bringing down locker rooms. That's that's why I said it's like me. That's why I said what I said. If I'm a general manager, I'm not even thinking about drafting a wide receiver in any anyone, especially in the first round. If I don't need it, I'm not thinking about it. That's because these guys are getting way out of control. Guys ain't even barely in the league. They can't, like, once they start getting praised, it, all this shit goes straight to their head. They need to be humbled. A lot of these young, especially in college, well, because they're getting all the NIL deals and they're getting paid a hundred, you know, a uh, hundred thousand dollars, you know, in the, in a in a freshman years and stuff like that. Like players are just they're ungrateful. Um and and like I said, me, I like I would humble the shit out of these players. I would like to be honest, I wouldn't touch a uh, I wouldn't touch a wide receiver until like the uh pick fifteen. I wouldn't even touch him. Like if 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 you if you don't have a pedigree like a Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm not touching right. him. Right. Right, because right, you know his right. dad taught him. You know his dad taught him right. So if you don't yeah. have that Brendan Rice, like I like we we I'm I'm not touching these guys who've never been there, because you know they've been taught right. They've been taught well with when it comes down to their dad and whatnot. If yeah. you don't have the pedigree, I'm not touching you. Now I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna throw another name into in, into that. I'm gonna throw Travis Hunter name in now. He's been taught yeah. right by Dion. So that's yes. like that's another guy. It's like like I said, most yeah. of these guys haven't been taught right. If you don't have if you see the thing is about the NFL, you gotta learn how to play the game. Okay? It's not do what you wanna do. Once you start deviating from the game and how the NFL conducts itself. And when it comes down to business, anytime you go out of that business, you and your agent start doing things, you know, the question uh, for like, for, uh, it was, a, I forgot the agent that was in baseball uh, and he was doing a lot of illegal tactics and stuff like that. And he was ass raping a lot of uh, organizations. He ended up stealing, like doing like little dirty tactics to get uh, guys like uh, the yeah. first baseman, Travis, um, not Travis, but there was the left Mark Teixeira. He was doing like little dirty tactics to yeah. get these guys contracts, um, and they end up getting their money. But it it it, it screwed up baseball because mm-hmm. you couldn't trust players anymore. It's the same thing what we saw with um, um, Freddie Freeman and his and his agent. They doing all these yeah. dirty tactics. So once you start seeing these types of things and these agents of these players start doing these dirty tactics, the NFL already start like, you know, weeding you out. That's what happened. Like I said, Freddie, he was a victim of his agent, but uh, so it's not quite the same, but like the agents, they, they do a lot of dirty tactics. And once they figure out, all right, this guy is not trying to, you know, play our game. In the NFL, they end up, you know, a lot of these players become victims to these greedy ass agents. So it's like players don't understand the type of agent that you got. You can end up out of the league a whole lot faster. Some guys don't mm-hmm. even make it three years in the NFL because of their dirty agents. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, you know, you know, I. When when I when I when I think of when I think about it along those lines, you know, and then I, I begin to understand, you know, because I, I have to, you know, take a step back and look up and understand why I right, why this guy would be like, you know, negotiating on his own, mm-hmm. you know, or you know, or, or being, you know, represented by someone that you know, you know. It's not a you know not known you know it's a, a kind of sort of almost you know a rookie in the game and I, and I'm getting it because a lot of these guys, a lot of these agents that have been you know in the mix for a while it, 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 they fucked up a lot of guys' careers, mm-hmm. you know. Um, See, it, it and the thing is, a lot of a lot of players are going to. Uh, they their own agents, but even with that, the NFL, if you're going to represent yourself, you still have to go get, uh, go to school and get 
um, license to become an agent. So that's the thing that what, uh, people were talking about Lamar Jackson. Lamar wanted to represent himself, but he didn't want to go and actually go through the qualifications, getting his, whether it's himself or his mother. Whatever the case is, those guys got to go through the NFL protocol to be uh, to get the certification to represent themselves as a so there's a system in place and anytime you try to deviate from the system that's when the organization in this case the nfl is going to kind of uh ban you from uh see it so this is one of the reasons why you see guys like you see guys like julio jones so like i don't think julio is that bad but what happened with julio jones i don't think julio is that far gone physically where he can't make uh at least make a roster and play in somebody's slot like he still has those skills, yeah. but when you do these things to fuck up the the system and buck the system and try to take advantage of the system, this is when organizations say, "All right, we got to let you go." This is why guys like uh, Larry Fitzgerald play year after year after year after year for like 10, 12 years is because he played ball. He gave money yeah. back to the team. He he took pay cuts. He ended up paying for $5 million. And then at the end of the year, he got a $5 million bonus. He, it's deep. You got to learn how to play ball. So a lot of the a lot of these players, they be saying, hey, man, let me get my money. I want to get my money. You will get your money. But sometimes you got to learn how to play ball. Some people want their twenty million dollars now, but in 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 reality, getting your twenty million dollars in a in the course of five years, especially when it comes down to taxes, five years is better than getting in one year because you get that shit in one year, you gonna pay, you gonna have to pay ten million dollars off that off that twenty million dollar uh, uh, bonus that you got that twenty million. Right. That, that's what people don't get. So. Play, learn to play ball. It's the same thing what we did on YouTube. Look, the, the cut for YouTube, this, this this does not work. This this barely rarely happens in business where they get they take 30% off of everything that we make. 30% off of any super chats, all that type of stuff. We get 70% of every dollar that y'all y'all bring in, okay? 30%. They get 30% off of it play weird and, and, and with that you gotta learn how to play ball in order to keep that 70 percent as a content creator guess what we can't hit certain topics we can't be calling people off for their sexual orientation we can't be calling people out for their political status just learn how to play ball if you want your money learn how to play ball it's okay to play ball and stop being greedy all right, stop being greedy. Stop trying to call everybody out because you're not getting what you're going to play ball. Learn the business. Yeah. So I just, again, I just gave y'all a whole bunch of free game just right out. Learn to play ball. It's best for you in the long term to play ball. Stop being greedy. It's a process. Learn to play the game. And I guarantee you, you'll make more money than you ever will if you just learn how to play the game. Right. Well. <laughs> Well, that being said, Sam, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. <laughs> well, I think mean, that, that, that covers everything that needs to be covered for today. And uh, with that being said, um, you have to keep it real. <laughs> keep it A. Keep it dirty. And most notably, keep it real with yourself. For the center, this has been OG Big Sam, and we have to be.